Hi everyone, it's Dr. Crad. To the non-surgeons out there, I have a secret to tell you. Not all cases go as planned. And I think it's good to share videos when things get challenging. We learn the most from such cases. In this video, I will show you a difficult case in which I attempt to rescue a dislocated IOL, but things don't go exactly as planned. During my attempt to perform the Kim modified Yamani technique to rescue this lens, I kink the haptics, both of them. There are a few ways to perform Yamani intrascleral haptic fixation. We can call this the kinky version. Here is a video of the patient preoperatively. As you can see, her intraocular lens is dislocated inferiorly. She has a history of narrow angle glaucoma, including an acute angle closure episode with pressure in the 50s, and she also has a history of pars plana vitrectomy. This case is challenging for many reasons. First, this patient has small eyes with limited exposure of her sclera. For the Yamane procedure, it's helpful to have good exposure of the patient's sclera. As you'll see, I'll have to rotate her eye to properly mark. I considered sitting superiorly to give myself better scleral exposure, but she has a pterygium nasally, and if that were ever to be removed in the future, there would be a higher risk of haptic extrusion, erosion, and exposure. For you who do pterygium surgery, the epithelium that grows over the sclera is super thin. The second challenge in this case is that the IOL I'm going to rescue is not ideal for the Yamane procedure. It's the ZA9003 by J&J. I've never yamane this lens before. The haptics are very delicate and can kink easily. Third, this patient has had prior pars plana vitrectomy, so there may be some subconjunctival fibrosis. Fourth, this patient has a history of acute narrow angle glaucoma. Despite having LPIs already, an anterior chamber IOL or ACIOL is contraindicated, and so that's why I will attempt the Yamani. An iris fixated IOL would be possible and technically much easier, but I believe that fixating the IOL to the sclera is a superior end goal. After creating my paracentesis, I instill viscoelastic both posterior and anterior to the lens, and then I'm going to lift the IOL anteriorly. This eye already had a pars plana vitrectomy, otherwise I would perform an anterior vitrectomy at this point. We have some air bubbles, so I'm gonna remove them to optimize my view. Next, I will create a temporal incision, but I will make a new one because I'm not sure how wide that previous incision is with the suture. I don't wanna take the chance that it's too big, and I'm only gonna enter partially about halfway because the eye already has an IOL and my plan is to rescue it. If I will replace this IOL, I can expand my incision. I grasp the IOL to bring the distal haptic anterior to the iris. So I just grab the edge and I prolapse it anteriorly. So now the distal haptic is anterior to the iris. I reinflate the anterior chamber with viscoelastic to protect the cornea. Next, I lift the optic with the Drysdale on my left hand and use the Kuglin to rotate the haptic anterior to my Drysdale. Now that the IOL is in the anterior chamber, I'm going to reposition the IOL. I'm going to rotate it so that it's in the ideal position to perform the Kim modified version of the Imani technique. And if you're not familiar with the Kim modified version, you externalize the distal haptic outside the cornea and then you cannulate the trailing haptic first. So I'm using a 25 gauge needle through my distal paracentesis, and I'm going to grab the distal haptic with the Schneider graspers by MST, and I'm going to cannulate the distal haptic in the bevel of the needle to externalize it. I'm trying to do this gently because I know these haptics can kink very easily. I pull the distal haptic out of the eye a little bit more to push the trailing haptic further in the eye. Then I will prepare my needles. These are 30 gauge thin walled needles by TSK. And the needle on my right, the bevel will face me. And then the needle on my left, the bevel will face away from me. 
Now it's time to mark the limbus, so I dry it with a Wexel sponge and use a fine tip marker to place one dot. And then I mark 180 degrees away from it, making sure that the two dots, if connected, will intersect the center of the pupil. Using a caliper, I will measure 2.5 millimeters posterior to those marks. I will place a mark there, and then I will measure 2 millimeters tangential to that posterior mark and make a second mark with ink on the sclera. All right, the marks are placed on the first side, and now we're going to go to the other side. Now on the right, there's a lot more redundant conjunctiva. If I use the caliper to try to indent, it wouldn't show because this tissue is too thick. So I'm just going to mark 2.5 millimeters posterior and 2 millimeters tangential to that. But I don't get a clean mark. You can see that there's so much redundant tissue in this area. Remember, the patient had a history of pars plana vitrectomy, and I assume they had a pyridomy, and they also have that nasal pterygium. I could perform another pyridomy and then close the conjunctiva at the end, but I decided not to. I just want to make sure that I enter the sclera about two millimeters tangential to the posterior mark. Before making the pass, I decide to put the conjunctiva on stretch, and I realize that even my posterior mark is off, so I really need to go relative to the limbus about two and a half millimeters posterior. And regardless where I put this needle, I just need to make sure my next needle pass on the other side of the eye is 180 degrees away. So I tunnel in and then bring the needle tip into view through the pupil. And notice that I have a sponge placed at the temporal canthus to drain the fluid from the eye because the bound salt solution always has been flooding the eye, limiting my visibility. And that's why I haven't put an AC maintainer yet. I'm hoping to be able to do this without it. So I gently grasp the proximal haptic with the Schneider graspers, and I try to gently feed it through the needle holder. But the anterior chamber is collapsing right now. I'm having limited view. I can't see. I think I'm in, but oops, I kinked the haptic with the needle. I was focusing on grasping the haptic gently with my forcep, but I didn't realize that I would kink it so easily with just the needle tip. So I reinflate with viscoelastic and prepare to put my AC maintainer. I don't want the anterior chamber to collapse again, obstructing my view. The eye may pool in BSS more, but we'll see how it goes. Now I gotta decide what to do with this lens. The trailing haptic is bent. Should I just trim it off and allow it to be a little bit shorter and then I can cut the other side equally? Or should I just replace the lens? Now that it's bent, it's gonna be much harder to cannulate this haptic. If I cut out this lens and put a new lens, I can't guarantee that I don't kink the new IOL's haptic. Should I replace the lens or should I trim the end of the haptic off? Is the haptic damaged beyond repair? Can I just bend it back? Will I be able to cannulate it if I keep it? Does this haptic even fit through my 30 gauge needle? I may as well test it while the haptic is sitting outside the eye. If it doesn't fit, then the answer is simple. Replace the lens. Because even if I trim it, it's not going to fit. Let's see. It actually goes in. So much easier when you do this outside of the eye. Is it just me or did this haptic get a little bit straighter after I cannulated it through the needle? Let me put it in one more time and get used to the motion. I want to get used to the angle in which this haptic goes in the needle. I'm liking it. I think this could work. Now that I have a better feel for the angle, I feel more confident about cannulating this haptic inside the eye. So I'm going to make another attempt, and if I need to, I can trim the haptic after I externalize it. I rotate the eye, and I'm going to pass the needle 2.5 millimeters posterior to the limbus, I'm going to tunnel the needle two millimeters through the sclera, and then I'm going to rotate the needle tip towards the pupil until I can see the needle tip. If I don't like the way the IOL sits, I can just take out the lens and put in a new one. Now I'm going to carefully grasp the haptic, gently put the haptic back into the eye, and then try to cannulate the haptic inside the needle. The iris is coming out of the incision, but at least I have the AC maintainer to form the AC as needed. 
I just want to make sure I don't incarcerate the iris as I do this. With very little force, I try to dock the haptic into the needle bevel. I don't have to thread the haptic much, but with persistence, I'm able to dock the haptic and pull the haptic through the scleral tunnel. The haptic is now sitting under the fold of conjunctiva, so I'm gonna rotate the eye upwards to expose the haptic tip. I'm gonna grasp it, dry the area, and then I'm going to melt the tip just so that the haptic doesn't fall back into the eye. Next, I'm gonna reposit the iris back into the eye, inject a bit more viscoelastic. I have the irrigation turned off now. There's this old capsule tension ring inside the eye, which we don't need, so I'm just gonna remove it. Again, I'm gonna place some viscoelastic inside the eye to create some space. And then I'm gonna create a new mark because my old mark is not 180 degrees away from where I place the haptic through the sclera. So you actually don't even need to mark your first needle pass. You just need to make sure that your second one is 180 degrees away from wherever you place the first scleral pass. Next, I rotate the eye downwards to expose the superior sclera, and I make sure that I'm entering the sclera 180 degrees away from where I entered the sclera on the other side. I tunnel two millimeters, rotate the needle until I can see it through the pupil, and then I'm going to try to grasp the haptic and cannulate the haptic into the bevel of the needle. But the IOL Optic is anterior to the iris. I think I should have put the IOL posterior to the iris. And so I'm at a really bad angle and I have the irrigation on, which is to help to keep the anterior chamber formed. But the pressure from the irrigation is pushing the iris out. But I'm able to dock the haptic into the needle and withdraw it through my scleral tunnel. But I cannulated it more than I needed to. And so now I have a kink in the haptic similar to the kink in the other side. I mean, at this point, you might think I'm kinking the haptics on purpose. I melt the tip of the haptic, and now I'm debating. Should I trim the edges of the haptics on both sides equally to get rid of the kink, or is the haptic straight enough? Will the haptic sit in the sclera in a way where the lens can be centered well without any tilt? I am confident in my tunnel length. There's no flagpole sign, so I think that the haptics will conform to the angle of the tunnel. However, the lens doesn't look centered right now because the haptic on the right at around 2 o'clock is not feeding through the scleral tunnel. It's stuck in the subconjunctival fibrosis. I remove the AC maintainer and then reposit the iris tissue back in the eye, and then I tap on the IOL, trying to rotate the haptic on the right side in. I inspect the area of the haptic, and it's still not tunneling into the sclera. I need to advance this haptic in order for the lens to center. So I repeatedly push the haptic into the sclera until it's no longer visible through the conjunctiva. And the lens is much better centered now. Do I need to replace this lens? There's no visible tilt. It is well centered. And it seems very sturdy as I remove the viscoelastic. And fortunately, there are no signs of vitreous in the anterior chamber. I wanted to share this case with you guys because it was one that I found challenging. Not all cases are easy. We will all have challenging cases, and it's a learning opportunity. There are hundreds of perfectly executed Yamani cases online, but that's not reality. I learned from this case, and I hope there are young surgeons out there that can learn from it too. Here is the patient's eye a couple weeks after surgery, and they are doing phenomenally. The haptics are well buried within the sclera, the IOL is stable, and the patient's uncorrected vision is 2030 in this eye. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.